Hey everyone, this is the Sunbro, and I'm back with more Dark Souls 2. Today we are going to be exploring Majula for the most part, and I'm going to be showing you the beginning items and stuff that are good to get right off the bat. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that I am a sorcerer now. I decided kind of at the last minute to change things up because I'm pretty far with my normal off-camera profile and I didn't want to make something that was exactly identical or anything. Um, first thing, don't bother to try for that item. Um, later in the game there is someone who can put in ladders for you or you can buy the cat ring from this person in here. Well, not so much person. More like cat. Oh. Undead, are we? And one without much time remaining. Just about ready to fall apart, I'd say. Not exactly the time to be chatting with a cat. <laughs> Suit yourself. Oh yes, you may call me Shalqua. Enchante. So, what did you want anyway? Ooh, you smell wonderful. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, through her, you can look at covenants. Uh, she has more dialogue. You can abandon your current covenant. She also has rings. Ring of Evil Eye. Absorb health. Silver Cat Ring reduces falling damage. So that's the ring that you need if you don't want to wait for the ladder thing. Um, this ring, easier to be detected by enemies. And that can actually have some advantages because sometimes enemies uh, won't like pull properly when you want them to and you'll have to get too close and pull a lot of them so sometimes it'll help just being able to get one at a time easier to connect to players who've chosen the same god so people in the same covenant and then you can hear the voices of foes that one I'm not quite sure I think it just enhances the like noises the enemy make like when you hear, can hear them groaning and stuff in the background and then Homeward Bones, Prism Stones, Alluring Skulls, and Lloyd's Talismans. Nothing suited you, I presume? Nope. I don't want anything. A uh, really useful thing, because you should have your Estus Flask by now. Hit this, and a body will come up. And the body has an Estus Flask shard. And you can use that to get a second use, because at the beginning, you start off with just one use for your Estus Flask. So this will get you two. And also, there are these little pig things. They're almost impossible to see in the grass over there. Um, but they are pretty darn strong for the beginning of the game. Uh, they don't take a lot of damage, at least from physical attacks. I haven't tried magic on them. And uh, they do more damage than you would expect. And uh, yeah, so don't <laughs> don't piss them off. They drop cracked red eye orbs though, but they only have a one out of 100 chance. So at least according to the guidebook, I don't usually buy guidebooks for games, but there's really no info online for Dark Souls 2 yet, and I want to be able to tell you guys helpful info. So yeah, if you want to be an invader right away in the game, go over and murder those pigs all day long and see what you get. Uh, oh, um, hello there. Hey. W welcome to my uh, shop. I'm Morlin. And I, well, I sell armor. Oh, sorry, I... Please do have a look at my wares. 
I could really use the business. If you'd be so kind. Sure. And he has beginning shields you can buy in the game. Because some of the classes don't start with shields. Or don't start with a very good one. Like this one is 95% block. And it's pretty decent. It does require 20 strength though. So it's a bit much. And then sells three of the starting armor sets. Well, kind of. Not starting for the infantry, but sells the warrior starting. He sells the knight starting, except for the Faulkner helm is new. And then he has the infantry stuff. He does gain merchandise later on. Well, I... Yep, I don't want anything from you yet. Oh, and uh, since I did get the collector's edition, I do have the uh, black armor weapon pack stuff, so I guess I'll show you that now. Um, you get the black flamestone dagger, and it's not too great. Like, none of these are really, like, amazing or anything. If you look at the stats on the bottom, it's not even as strong as the dagger. And despite its name, it doesn't do fire damage or anything. Let me go to it here, and then you can see. And its uh, critical is worse, and everything. And then uh, this sword scales pretty well. D and D. I mean, it's not great, but it's an okay quality weapon. Um, but it's not as good as like the broadsword that you can buy. It's also extremely fragile. Bound hand axe is okay as well. Does bleed damage, which is kind of nice. Homunculus mace is by far the strongest of them, but also the least cool looking one um it has 130 damage starting out which is pretty decent but it weighs quite a bit and then you also get this staff but it doesn't just require intelligence as you can see it also requires 12 faith so it's not really something you can use right off the bat and then you get the transgressors level bleh can't speak today. <laughs> Leather shield. Uh, the advantage of this one is it weighs almost nothing. If you can see down at the very bottom, it weighs 0.3. It only blocks 75% physical, but it's still nice if you want a shield, but you don't want anything that weighs a lot. Then you got this one, weighs a little bit more, uh, blocks more physical. You got this one doesn't have very good uh, durability either. I mean, the, the quartz stuff doesn't. And you got this one, got 90 physical, and then this one has 85. So your best bet for blocking physical damage is going to be this one, at least if you have the uh, black armor set weapons pack. Main reason I wanted to show you guys this is because I've seen a lot of stuff online about how, like, some people are are angry that uh, people starting off with, like, the black armor weapon set have a huge advantage starting in the game. Um, like, they're worried about getting invaded by people who have, like, super strong weapons. Um, so I wanted to show you guys that the stats are really nothing to write home about. I only use the trang uh, I went the wrong way. Uh, Trangressor shield because, like I said, barely weighs anything. So it's a nice shield. And then this way. And while I don't have the guidebook in front of me, um, I don't remember what his sword is called. I'll be able to tell you guys later, but it is not the Moonlight Great Sword. Its description is nearly the same, but at the end, it 
hints towards it being a fake, and there is a real um, Moonlight Greatsword in the game, and it's a little bit smaller than the one he's carrying, and at the end of its description, it doesn't have the like question to it about it's possibly being fake. So it's still a good weapon, but it deals physical damage instead of uh, magic damage. And it also doesn't fire off those energy waves like it does in Dark Souls. Have you business with me? The way your under is all blocked up, you see, by this god awful statue. Heavens above. Who thought it a good idea to pit it there? Oof, I'm in quite the pickle now. You got life gem, three of them, so this is a good spot to go to. And three homeward bones, so that's probably one of the most useful pickups that you can get around. Uh, there's the statue he was talking about, and she is petrified. And you won't get a cure item for that for quite a while, so don't bother with this. You can't break it by hitting it or anything. But in here, you got an enemy. Let's see how much my magic does to you. Eh, an okay amount. As you can see, you can cast absurdly fast in this game. Ah. There we go. But it does drain your stamina, unlike in the previous games. Well, I actually don't know about Demon Souls. But it did not drain you in Dark Souls. So while you can cast extremely fast, you have a limited number to spam based on how much stamina you have, so it is actually worth going into vitality to increase your endurance. Oh, and another uh, tip that I realized pretty early on, so you guys might have already figured it out as well. Um, don't let your stamina bar drain all the way down. Because, like, I can sprint, and I won't let it get all the way down, and I can already sprint again. But if you sprint and let it get all the way down, like I'm holding B right now, and I can't sprint, and now I can. So, your stamina bar has to come back to full, and two seconds later, then you can sprint again once it's completely been exhausted. So, I'm not sure if that's like realistic exhaustion sort of thing. Like when you sprint until you can't sprint anymore and then it's really hard to get started up again as opposed to when you pace yourself. But, uh, regardless, that's something you guys should know. Oh yeah, I have zero deaths. Uh, Next time I play, I will be online. I forgot that I wasn't. Uh, this monument shows a worldwide death counter for the game. Last time I was on, it was 3 million. So, yeah. <laughs> Already been a lot. Uh, either here or up there is where you will join your first covenant. I'll actually go to that one first. Though it's not the one I am going to want to be in. Item over here. No. I did not do that. Um, oh, and in this game, Catalyst can actually do a bit of damage. Like when you hit people. It's not a lot, but... It's definitely enough if you're in a tight spot to be able to smack somebody. Five Homeward Bones. You can kneel here. Enter Covenant. Yes. 
And that was the main reason I wanted to do it, because I know the stone was here, but I hadn't gotten the achievement for it. And then you get the tablet. As far as I read, there isn't a penalty for leaving Covenants. There are a lot of rumors when the first Dark Souls came out that, like, if you left, you'd have, like, negative effects, and one of the, something that, one of the really popular posts that was sort of like a, a Sif thing, like that, when people are saying that he could, you could let him get away and get his full-size sword, which was a complete lie, um, it was a thing saying that you could, you got, like, a massive head, like, your head just grew really big or something, um, if you abandoned a particular covenant, but that was not the you case. Are. You have that distinct scent, the smell of irreversible fate. This is Majula. It is a kind of settlement, a place where life is almost normal. And in Drang Lake these days, there are very few places like that. I am Solden, and like you, I lost everything, and now I'm here. You probably heard that it was possible to break the curse here. Well, that's not true at all. There's nothing here for you, me, or anybody. Do you know much about souls? Even I'm not certain, but... I'm told that the soul is the essence of life itself. Anything living, sentient or no, supposedly has one. What we call the curse is traceable to the soul. Do you see what that means? To be alive, to walk this earth, that's the real curse, right there. We undead will never die. And that's quite a predicament, really. I don't know, I think it'd be cool to never die. <laughs> there are four beings in this land with giant souls. And wherever you go from here, you'll sooner or later come up against them. Each has a powerful soul and a terrible curse. If that frightens you, then you ought to just give up right now. Like I have. <laughs> Do you ever cry out for help? The journey of an undead is long and treacherous. You'll face invaders from other worlds at every turn. If you need help, why not proclaim faith in the Blue Sentinels? When you face danger, the Blue Sentinels will come to your aid. Protection is yours, if you wish. You need only accept their kind embrace. So basically what this covenant is, um, there's a covenant later on that, um, I actually don't remember what it's called offhand, but I'll be able to tell you guys next time. Um, but it's a little bit later in the game, and, um, it is like a version of this covenant, but you're the ones who get summoned to them. So, going into this covenant, it's, uh, you get the achievement called Covenant of the Meek. Um, so basically, if you get invaded, and there is a, uh, someone who's in the Guardian of the Blue Covenant, or something, it's called like that, um, then they will get summoned to help you. But I've been wearing the Guardian of the Blue Ring in my file for 
the majority of the time that I've been online, and I've never once been summoned to help anybody. So I'm really not sure how it works. But the main reason I do it is this. The blue seal is actually a useful ring in the beginning of the game. That is a wise decision. People are weak, but the blue sentinels watch over us in their benevolence. Let the sentinels cradle you in their embrace. Or maybe the blue sentinels is the covenant that helps you. I don't remember, actually. <laughs> um, and there's four ring slots. Thank God. <laughs> um, oh, this ring that I have here, you get that when you kill the ogre at the very beginning in Things Betwixt. Um, I couldn't kill it with a sword at the beginning of the game. It's extremely hard to do that. Um, but you can take it down with ranged attacks with pretty little difficulty. So you get this ring and uh, hits greatly reduce enemy poise. So basically like heavily armored opponents. If you have a weapon that doesn't do a lot of poise damage, it will do more poise damage. And then this ring right here is something you get when you drop the smooth and silky stone that I showed you guys last time into Silky the Crow's Nest in Things Betwixt. And you'll get this. It is literally just as it says, take the appearance of a phantom. So now I glow white. As far as I know, it doesn't have any benefit. And then there is this, Covenant of the for Apostles of Blue, and it says right there, slight, or increases HP slightly. So, it's a good ring to wear. Because, let's scroll over. HP is 799. I believe it's a 5% increase. Yep, 776, so... Yeah, I think it's around that. But, little HP increase does not hurt. And let's see... There's a few more things. Uh, the thing I'm about to grab now is... Pretty useful for players that don't have um, a chime but want to use miracles. But that's not... Oh, wait, that is this one. Yeah, uh, Morning Star and Clear Sacred Chime. So now, for one thing, Morning Star is a pretty darn good weapon. It does bleed and it has pretty high damage. Then you've got the Chime, requires 10 Faith, and this is how you cast Miracles instead of Talismans in this game. So if you aren't the Cleric, you don't need to wait to get one until later. But it's more than likely you won't have a Miracle at all if you don't start off as the Cleric, so... Well, you won't have a miracle for sure, but um, you won't get one until you find the person who sells a chime in the first place. But at least you won't have to waste the 1400 souls to buy one. So you've got those there. And now we're headed down here. And when you discover the person who sells miracles later on, uh, when she comes to Majulia, the, I can't speak today, I'm sorry, Majula, um, this light up above me, that right where my head is at, uh, that'll be lit with a white flame. So you'll know that 
she is down here. And when she is down here, she can use a miracle for 2,000 souls to touch this pedestal, and it will turn this whole room, and you'll be able to get inside there. But that won't be for... You know, that'll be like around two hours or so into the game. Oh, and by the way, um, in my normal file, I've played about... 14 hours, quite a bit of it was grinding because some of the places I was under leveled to be. Um, but I have encountered no mimics and I've only encountered one trap. And it was just a little crossbow that popped out and fired at me when I opened the chest, so I just kind of had to roll and it didn't hit me. And then we got this shield right here. And uh, if you don't have the pre-order weapons and you don't want to purchase a shield, this is a shield you can get for free just by going down here. Uh, and as you can see, the binoculars are not an item anymore. They are a weapon. So if you want to equip them, they are in your weapons stuff. So if you can't find them in your item inventory, that's because they aren't there anymore. And there's that pole chain there. Opens this door. And it, it will close behind you. But there's a bonfire a bit of the ways up ahead. But if it does close behind you and you need to get out, there's a pole chain here. So don't think you're trapped or anything when it closes. Then we have... Soul of Lost Undead and Broken Thief Sword. And we're running up here. And now we're at Hyde's Tower of Flame. Uh, don't let the largeness of these enemies fool you. They are pretty weak, but this isn't the first area of the game that you take down. Um, though the boss of this area is pretty weak as well. But... Um, yeah, you won't be doing this one first. You can, but uh, most players won't be because the area we'll be going to next episode is definitely easier. But uh, as you can see, there's a bonfire right there, and we are going to be heading over there. As long as this guy doesn't bother with me. Eh, he bothered. But still light the bonfire, rest at it, and we're all good. And, uh, as you guys have probably noticed, you can travel all the time now. I'm not sure how they're doing it as a lore sort of thing, but yeah, you can travel. <laughs> so, in that regard, as well as a few other things, um, it is a little bit more like Demon Souls. Yeah, that's one of the main things that I've noticed about this game so far, is that a lot of the changes they've implemented uh, are taken from Demon Souls. Oh, yeah, we can't forget this guy, a blacksmith that's useless. Oh, yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter. Just help me open this door. I packed my tools in here, seeing it was vacant. But now somebody's gone and locked the door. Okay. Not sure why he can't just crawl through the window or anything, but... Yep. You gotta find his key. Well, you don't need to find it. Um... A merchant sells it at the second bonfire in the forest area that we'll be headed to next time. It only costs a thousand souls, so it's pretty easy to get. And it will allow you to use that Titanite shard that we picked up in 
that house right there. So it allows for a quick plus one to a weapon or to armor to make it just a little bit better. And while I might be missing some items, I can't think of any at the moment that I've missed, or at least anything that is critical. You can't go into this house yet, uh, but I will show you guys where to get the key when we get to that point in the game, because it's in a little bit of a weird spot. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to find, so I'll show you guys where that is, because uh, unlike my Dark Souls playthrough, this is going to be definitely more of a walkthrough, like pointing things out, instead of me just trying to blaze through everything while half explaining stuff that I can't remember. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Is that can talk to her. However, give her a shard. <laughs> and now you have two uses. Oh, and how you uh, like plus one and stuff your SS flask, you'll get um, these uh, bone ashes later on. And you can burn those in the bonfire and it'll increase the amount that your SS flask heals you and if you were well I guess it really doesn't help but if you're dumb and kill her uh, she can be revived but the price to do it is it doesn't list it in the guidebook it just lists it as astronomically high um, I don't know why you would kill her, because you need her to level up, um, but yeah, she can be killed, and she can be revived. A couple of the NPCs can be revived if you kill them, but the max that I saw to revive one was like 6,000 souls. They get, like, graves somewhere, and you can, like, go to the grave and spend the souls, um, and then they will be revived, but her amount of souls to revive her is apparently, uh, too high to list, so. It's probably, like, half a million or something, I have no idea. But anyway, that's it for Majula, and then next time we are going to go to the forest area and try to get to the second bonfire, and then we'll probably be fighting the last giant in the episode after that. So, that's it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to praise the sun. And I will see you all next time.